Well, God bless your heart. This is Bishop Ronnie Crudup, Senior Pastor of New Horizon Church International here in Jackson, Mississippi, here with another edition of Wow Wednesday. And uh, I just want to thank God for each and every one of you and welcome you to this program again to all of New Horizon and our friends out there all over the world. Hey, it's good to have you back and you're in for, we're in for a really good time tonight. And so just, uh, hey, I bless God for his great goodness and his mercy. And it's going to be a wow time, okay? for this Wednesday. Now, what have I got in store for you? Well, first, let me just tell you about a few things coming up and where we are. And uh, then uh, we're going to get into a little music. I'm going to be singing. Uh, I'm going to be praying for the prayer list. And then we're going to get into the word. And so we've got a lot of good things that's happening. Now, I do want to uh, remind you that, of course, we've got uh, our national election coming up on uh, the 3rd. Uh, so Tuesday, the 3rd of November is national election. And I want to encourage everybody to go vote. Listen, it's critically important that you go vote. OK, if you can do early voting where you are, go do early voting because it's going to be a lot of people out there. If not, then prepare yourself to wait in line a long time. But it's going to be worth you waiting. And so go and exercise your right to vote. OK, uh, I've already uh, did my voting early. Uh, I and Sister Crudup, and so uh, we're just waiting on the results, okay? That's going to come, but listen, if you are a registered voter, then uh, please go vote, okay? Civic responsibility, everybody needs to exercise that right to vote. Also, in terms of some announcements of things, want to uh, also let everybody know that, of course, Saturday is Halloween, and here at New Horizon, we have an alternative that we call Holy Wing. And uh, with Holy Wing, we've got something going for our children and our youth. And so uh, on that Saturday, the uh, 31st at 2 o'clock from 2 to uh, really about 5.30 or 6 o'clock, then our young people, our youth, uh, have an event that's going on down at our child daycare center on Wheatley uh, Street. And so I want to encourage all of our young folks to go down there and be a part of that. Hey, get in touch with Minister I Asia and other folks in the youth ministry and be a part of this special thing on uh, Halloween night uh, that's been prepared for you. For everybody uh, who has children, then uh, that would be actually uh, uh, 11 and down. Uh, then actually that Saturday night at 5 p.m. here at the campus uh, of New Horizon Church International here at uh, 1750 Ellis Avenue in Jackson, Mississippi. We're going to actually do a big drive through uh, Halloween, uh, Holy Wing service for all of our young folks. And so uh, literally you can drive through. You don't have to get out. Nobody will be getting out. It's going to be safe. Uh, plenty of candy for everybody. That starts at 5 and will uh, go to somewhere around uh, 6.30 or as long as the candy uh, lasts as a part of this. And so, by the way, thank God for everybody who has contributed to this. I know that uh, the children are going to have a great time, okay, in that as well. And so, hey, we're looking forward. And, of course, uh, on Sunday, uh, we, it's the Lord's Day, and it's going to be a great, great time. So, listen, we're going to have a wow, wow time in the midst of everything that will uh, uh, that will take place. Okay, uh, let me start us with uh, uh, with a brief uh, word of prayer, uh, kind of invocation, if you will, and then I want to sing. Uh, one of the things that I do is I always take a hymn out of the hymn book. And I will sing a cappella uh, without uh, music to this. And I'm going to do actually in the uh, hymn book that we have, uh, the national, the new national Baptist hymnal that has all these great uh, traditional hymns in it. We're going to do hymn number one, holy, holy, holy. So I'm going to be singing that uh, shortly. But let me just start us with a word of prayer. Father, just thank you so much for this time. We come and bless you for this time, for this wow uh, Wednesday. 
Uh, bless our time together, everything that, that will take place uh, as we fellowship together, as we sing this hymn together, as we pray for our prayer list together, and certainly as we get into the word. Just bless me, bless the people of God that are watching me. Bless us all real, real good is my prayer. In Jesus' marvelous name, amen and amen. And so the song, the hymn that we're going to be singing, as I said, is Holy, Holy, Holy. Uh, the first verse goes, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Uh, we're going to do all four verses of that. And so uh, join me as I sing. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea, cherubims and seraphims falling down be for thee, which word and art and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hides thee, Though the eyes of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art holy. There is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Nutty. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. He's holy. And on this, uh, this Wednesday evening before this national election, in the midst of this pandemic, I just felt like, wow, what an appropriate song to sing. And I pray that that would get in your spirit and that uh, you'll be singing that a long, long time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hopefully all the way up to the election, all right? Well, listen, I want to pray for uh, 
folks that are on our prayer list and uh, we print uh, prayer lists out uh, every week, as uh, I said on last week. Um, listen, you can uh, uh, join in on this. You can send us your prayer request. Uh, typically, this is a prayer list for sick folk or folk that's dealing with bereavement or other issues, but uh, you can send us uh, your prayer request for uh, this prayer list as well, and, uh, and we'll add you, okay? to uh, our prayer list. You can call the church office at 601-371-1427. That's 601-371-1427. That's our main number. Talk to the person. Typically, that would be Mrs. Blackman. And I'll just say to her that, listen, uh, I want to be on your prayer list. Bishop Cruz talked about that. And we'll add you to the prayer list and, uh, and we'll pray for you, okay? And uh, as I pray for folks, uh, because it came up, certainly... Our issue is never to embarrass anybody, but if you call and ask for us to pray for you on the prayer list, I'm going to pray for what's here, okay? Uh, so, Father, in the wonderful and the strong, strong, strong name of Jesus, oh God, I bless your wonderful name. God, I come and just lift up these folks that are part of our prayer list today and pray that you will just do this awesome and wonderful work that only you can do that we know you can do, we believe in you, that you can do, that we trust, God, you're going to do, and that you're going to do it better than we could ask or think, God. And so, uh, God, we, we just, we, we trust and give you the liberty to go beyond what we ask or think, because we know that we don't even know how to pray totally as we ought. And so we're looking forward to your intercession, God, in moans and groans as the book of Romans says in chapter 8, that cannot be uttered, God. And so we're looking forward to that. God, I come and I lift up Sister Celia Lampkin to you and thank you for what you're doing for Celia and just continue to bless her tremendously. Thank you for a long life that you're giving to my sister and you're just showing your love. Let's just pray for this. Father, in the strong name of Jesus, I come and I lift up Sister Celia Lampkins to you and God, just thank you so much for Celia and what you're doing for her and how you're blessing her and giving her a long life. I pray, God, that you would just continue to be with her and touch her and her entire family, her children, her grandchildren. Thank you for it, God. I come and I lift up uh, one of our teenagers, Jordan Reed, and we just rejoice with her that uh, she is now cancer-free. Glory to God. And just thank you for what you're doing for Jordan and just the entire Reed family. Continue to bless them real, real good. And, and God, we just praise you. Uh, we lift up Sister Lily Portis to you. Thank you for what you're doing for Lily. And uh, God, just pray particularly just uh, as they're thinking there may be a need for some more surgery. I pray you just change that thing, God. You've just done so much for Lily that we're excited about. But change this thing too, God. And and just take her forward even more. Continue to bless her, her husband, and, and her children. We just praise you for your goodness and mercy. We lift up uh, Sister Shirley Hall, who is uh, not one of our members, but the sister of a member of the church. And uh, we just pray for her as she's been uh, dealing with surgery. And, and God, just pray even more. You'll touch up on her and swift recovery as she lives in Chicago, Illinois. So just touch Sister Shirley and bring total healing upon her. Magnify yourself in her body. We lift up Brother Stephen Hall Jr. And uh, we just thank you for what you've been doing for Stephen. And, and just, uh, Lord, continue that, uh, that recovery for him. And, uh, Lord, we just come against anything related to sickle cell. And, uh, and God, just pray that you would just bring total healing to Stephen as well. We lift up Sister Michelle Dinkins to you. Uh, continue to touch Michelle real, real good. God, we just uh, uh, pray for Michelle. Pray particular for that, that particular arm and, and that, uh, Lord, that you just continue to, once again, just bring full, total healing to Michelle as well and, and just uh, bless her and her family. We thank you for that. We thank you for Elder Wallace Horton and uh, who you've uh, once again also brought a mighty long ways. Just continue to bless Wallace and uh, uh, pump life even more in Wallace. God, 
that he would live, live, live. Woo, not only he would not die, but that he would live, live, live. Bless him and Janie. Thank you for his help made and just bless Janie as well and that entire family. Lift up Sister Audrey Evans. Thank you for the healing mercies also and what you're doing in Audrey's life and how you brought her through cancer as well. And God, we just pray even more just for uh, those final treatments of everything you're doing in Audrey's life. Just magnify yourself in her life too and bless her real, real good, her and her family. God, we lift up Brother James Bradford, uh, who's not a member, but once again is a friend of a member. And we just pray for him that uh, you would just touch his body and Lord, just heal him fully of all that has ailed him. Uh, yeah, get him off ventilators and everything else, God, just uh, save his life, bless him like only you can and deliver him back to his family. Uh, we also lift up uh, Brother Albert Goodwin, another uh, nun member, but somebody who uh, cares about him, a member of our church who cares about him. And so we just pray just for healing mercy upon him as well. And so just magnify yourself in, uh, in Albert's life and give him total healing uh, as well, God, in recovery. So bless him real, real good. We lift up Sister Annie Campbell, another person who is not a member but uh, is the mother of a member of the church here. And so we just pray for her and particularly the kidney related issues and other issues she has had and just bring total healing there to God. You're the God of healing. And so God, just touch uh, Sister Annie uh, Campbell even more. We lift up Brother Willard Wilson, a member of the church here. And God, we just pray for uh, God, just for Willard that, that, that you would clear his body of every bit of cancer and things that uh, seems to kind of be coming back, but that God, that you would just move up him and curse every cancer cell in his body. Lord, I pray that, that the cancer would die and Willard would live. And so just touch him and his family. Oh, magnify yourself in Willard's life. Oh God, we just uh, lift up. Also, uh, uh, Goldie Alexander, another nun member, and just uh, uh, pray. Uh, Sister, uh, Sister Minnie Cage's father, Goldie, and God just pray your touch upon him uh, and just bless him in a tremendous way. Make these last years his best years, God is. He is 90 years old, so bless him. We lift up Brother Isaac Stubbs, a part of our church family here, and just touch Brother Stubbs. Oh, God, deal with every bit of lingering kind of uh, circumstance that is going on in his body, strengthen him, heal him totally, and bless Brother Stubbs as only you can. Bless him and his wife, Angela. So just show your hand upon them strong. Lift up Sister Adriana Brumfield, another member of the church. And God, we just pray, uh, just uh, God, as she recovers from this surgery, that you will just touch and bless her. And, and uh, Lord, just just cause this, uh, this healing to be three times faster than it normally would be. Uh, God, just give her your grace as she's experienced uh, some serious pain. We just pray, God, that you would just cause all of that to cease and that you would just show your hand strong in her physical body. So bless her and help her real, real good, God. We just thank you for that. Sister Camille McGee, another member of this church, thank you, Lord. Uh, she's had this procedure, this outpatient procedure as well. And just pray that you would give her full recovery as well. And God, every tender spot, just bless and touch, God, like only you can. We thank you for what you're doing in Camille's life and how you're showing yourself strong in her as well. We lift up Sister Mary Hall, uh, another member, nun member of this church. And uh, once again, who is, uh, hey, the mother of sister, uh, brother Alusha's McBride. And she is 93 years old. And so, God, we just pray for her and, and uh, as she's dealing with COVID um, and uh, that, God, that you would just bring her through this, God. Show your hand strong and mighty on Sister Mary Hall, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that she will live and not die. God, just lift up uh, Hoyt and uh, uh, Betty Owens to you as well. And, and the God, that you just show your hand strong in Betty's life as well. Oh, magnify yourself in that, God, you know that circumstance. And God, we just lift up to you, God, that you would show your hand and Lord, give them direction of what way you want them to go. 
And so touch, uh, Betty, touch Hort and that entire family, God, like only you can. So do a miracle there, God, would be our prayer. And God, we just thank you for what you're doing in all of these people's lives, God. Yeah, just how you are uh, just uh, glorifying yourself and, and just touching real, real good. We also lift up some families that are in bereavement. We lift up Sister Sherry Watkins and her family at the passing of uh, of her brother and just pray for that uh, family as uh, this coming weekend they'll be funeralizing him out of state. We also lift up John and uh, Marcella Singleton to you as well at the passing of their grandson. And Lord, just uh, pray in that whole circumstance that uh, is being dealt with there in uh, Vicksburg. And so just touch them even more, Lord, and be with them and show your hands there. We lift up Sister uh, Patricia Butler and her family at the passing of uh, sister-in-law and that funeral was this past weekend uh, in Kansas and so God uh, in Kansas City Missouri and so we just pray even more your your touch and your grace on that family God and uh, we lift up uh, uh, brother Larry McGee at the passing of uh, of his stepmother uh, sister uh, Alice uh, Amos and so we just pray that you would comfort that family in this time of bereavement God thank you that we can cast all of our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us, God. Also, Lord, just lift up families in this city that uh, with all of these murders and other things, we've got young folks that have been murdered and and just all kind of up and down things that are happening. Lord, just pray for all of these families that are suffering a whole lot of hurt and pain around losing loved ones, God, in this, this, uh, this rash, or you may even say this crime wave that is going on in Jackson and across Mississippi. And so, God, we just pray for people. And we just pray, God, that this thing would stop in the strong name of Jesus, God. We just move into the heavens, God, and just pray that, uh, Lord, you would give us direction and, Lord, you would break this spirit, certainly over Jackson, Mississippi, and Mississippi murder, and that you would show your hand strong there. And, God, then I just pray for Everybody who is out there, Lord, there's a lot of need from people who are watching me, who may not be on our prayer list, but I pray for them nevertheless. And God, I just pray for everybody out there that's dealing with any kind of hurt or pain in their bodies. And my brother and sister, if you just put your hand over that place right now, Father, I pray that you would just release grace for healing mercies to them right now. God, you've given me the ability to be able to speak to that, and I release that now in the strong and marvelous name of Jesus, that healing mercies will go forth for every one of those folks now and that we will get that testimony of what you have done. That's right. Hallelujah. Whether it's a tooth or somebody was dealing with some of that feet, whatever that circumstance is, somebody's dealing with a, with a rash, um, God says, listen, uh, with him, all things are possible if you believe. And God says, listen, I'm touching and agreeing with you, and it's going to happen. Lord, I pray, particularly for folks who are dealing with some real tough pain, I pray that that pain now would cease in the name of Jesus and uh, would not come back. And so thank you for that right now, God, just for uh, how you are touching your people. I just pray, too, for open doors for folks out there who need an open door. That may be for a job. It may be some career path. Uh, it, whatever that circumstance is you're dealing with, somebody's dealing with a, some sports-related circumstance, uh, God is giving you an open door in that. Uh, somebody is a writer, uh, and uh, you're looking for an open door. I pray, God, just for that open door right now. So just touch in the midst of all of that. And so, Lord, I just praise you for it, that uh, you're the God that delivers. In Jesus' marvelous name, amen. And amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Hey, God is moving. Receive that. And uh, listen, uh, we, we love to hear testimonies about this. Uh, you can call us here at the church or you can contact us here in our uh, info. You can uh, contact us through info at uh, nhcms.org uh, and let us know what has happened. Uh, certainly, you can also uh, inbox me at rcrudum. Uh, at uh, uh, nhcms.org and uh, let me know, glory to God, uh, what is taking place, what's happening in your life. Or you, as I said, you can call us uh, different ways you can respond 
And we would love to hear from you because I know God is doing something real, real good, okay? Something real, real special. And listen, this is a wow-related time, God. No doubt about it. This is a wow-related time. And I hope you have appreciated that so far. Glory to God. Well, listen, we're going to get into a word for uh, this final time of our service on this evening this a Wednesday evening, and of course, this is the Wednesday before our national election. Okay, and so, uh, uh, and so I decided, you know what, I want to talk about this election. I, I want to talk about what is happening, and uh, because, uh, uh, I, and the title of the message is why. Okay, W H Y. Okay, uh, the title of the message is why. Uh, I'm using as my main text verse, uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, uh, beginning with verse 14 and reading down through verse 18, uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, okay, as my main text verse uh, in this. And uh, once again, the title of the message is, Why? Why in the world are we in this place uh, where it causes all of us, me included, to feel like that this is the most significant election we've ever had, maybe, in the life of the United States. Why is it that we've got more people that are going out to vote than, you know, than we will break records, okay? I mean, people standing in line to vote, you know, for four or five hours to make sure that that uh, that vote is going to be counted, and that's wonderful and awesome, but why? Why are we in this circumstance? Why is there so much division in this country at this particular point in time, okay? Why in the world is that the case? Here's a good one. Why is there so much division in the church, okay? Why are white Christians, okay, particularly evangelicals on one side, of, uh, of this thing, and then black Christians, black evangelicals, uh, typically on the other side. Why is there so much division? Uh, why is it that, that people uh, who, you know, um, once again, who love the Lord Jesus Christ uh, can be so opposite, you know, uh, have tremendous differences when it comes to this political stuff here in this country. Why is it that in the Christian community, you can have some people who uh, love Donald Trump, almost to some degree deify Donald Trump, and you got other people who despise him and, and, and hate him tremendously. Why? Why in the world are we in this place? And what I want to do tonight is is frankly, and I, I want to be real honest with you, I want to give you my opinion, okay, from what I see in Scripture, okay? And I want to say it that way because you've got so many people, honestly, many people I respect, okay? Um, uh, e even my presiding bishop came out with a statement that I totally disagree with, okay? Uh, w w why in the world would you have other people, big names all over the place, who are, who, who are taking stands that are so tremendously different when it comes to this presidency, this election, uh, and so why, okay? And I know that everybody thinks that, you know, they're correct and they've got a word from the Lord, and I do think I got a word from the Lord, but I also recognize this. A lot of these other folks feel like they got a word from the Lord, okay? And can I say this to you? And that's why I want to be humble some in this, even though I, I think I'm correct, okay? Um, time is going to tell. Uh, on the uh, 4th, and could be even the 5th, I don't think it's going to last that long. Frank, frankly, I think Tuesday night we're going to know, okay? But, uh, hey, definitely by the 4th or the 5th of November, we're going to know who had a word from the Lord and who was in error about this one particular circumstance, if you will, okay, uh, about Donald Trump and about his presidency, okay? Uh, and so we're going to know uh, who was in error in terms of that and uh, who had 
if you will, a correct word about this. And, and, and I'm not trying to take that in saying that if you had a correct word, because I think that, that could be me, that that means that I'm always right and have always been right in something else. No, because here's the frank reality is that, that uh, all of us at some point hit it, you know, on the money. We're, we're, we're correct in what we say. And then there's times when we miss it. Okay. Because we, we see in part and we prophesy in part. Okay. And so the fact is that even though we can be tremendously sincere in what we do, how many of you know, sometimes you can be sincerely wrong, okay? And that's just being frankly honest with you, okay? Uh, we don't try to be wrong in terms of things, but hey, none of us uh, counts infallibility. In fact, we don't even think the Pope is infallible, okay? And so we don't think that we're infallible. Uh, that's why we have the Bible and we try to... Uh, bring everything back to the Bible itself. But once again, in the midst of this circumstance, you got people on both sides who believe the Bible, who believe that the Bible is the inerrant, infallible word of God, like I do, okay? But I know people who uh, would agree with me on that, who are on a different side of this whole thing than I am. So what I'm going to give you uh, tonight as we deal with this is, I'm going to give you my opinion, okay, of where I think uh, this is going. Uh, once again, I believe I'm right, but hey, November 4th or 5th is going to show it, okay, uh, in terms of that. And so that's what uh, uh, I want to say to you, okay, in terms of these things. Now, um, and um, uh, I, I got my grandsons who are helping me in this, and guys, my time clock is going out, so y'all going to have to do something and help me in terms of this, okay? Because it's going out, okay? So I don't know what time we are in this. Um, now, uh, in 1 Kings uh, chapter 19 and uh, verse 14 and following, um, and so... Uh, yeah, so the time has gone out, and so I'm talking to my grandsons here for a moment. Hey, the time has gone out on my timer, okay? Uh, so, all right, listen to what the Word says. It says, and this is, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is about Elisha, okay? Uh, or Elijah, okay? And uh, after he had uh, 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 actually, you know, uh, called down weather, he had... Uh, defeated the prophets, the false prophets on Carmel, um, and he's escaping from Jezebel. So that's the context. And the scripture says this in verse number 14. It says, and it said, I have been very, he's in the cave at this point, uh, where God says, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he says, I've been very zealous for the Lord of hosts because of the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword, and I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, talking to Elijah, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Also, you, will, you shall anoint Yehu, the son of Mensha, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, you shall anoint prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the, the sword of Hazel, Yahu will kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Yahu, then Elisha will kill. Yet I have Reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth uh, that has not kissed him. Wow. And the word of God from uh, verse 14 through 18 of uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. Um, and I, I read that passage for, for a particular reason, uh, and that is... Uh, uh, particularly with dealing with this whole issue of why, because uh, in the midst of this, this big political storm that we're having here in the United States, the central character is Donald Trump, okay? President Donald Trump. And the question is, 
how do you see Donald Trump? Okay. Once again, there are some people who love Trump, really like Trump, some who may even have deified Trump. There are others who don't like Trump, uh, who may despise Trump or hate Trump, you know. Uh, and so where are you in terms of Trump? Now, I'm going to just be real frank and honest with you. I don't support Donald Trump, okay? And I need to say this to you. I don't support Donald Trump. I never have supported Donald Trump. And I can go back before his first election in 16 and, and say some things to you related to that. And I have to say that because on the other side, uh, I'm an independent that tends to be more Republican leaning, okay? And I only lean Republican, not because I just like Republicans, but because there are some key points along the way for years that I have advocated. And the Republicans, moral particular things, the Republicans have also advocated that. And so I just a lot of times ended up on some of those things, okay? But frankly, I see myself as an independent. Uh, but I have never, I never supported Donald Trump, okay? Uh, and so in the midst of this election where everything hinges on Donald Trump and people, you know, making prophecies and saying that, that Donald Trump uh, is going to be reelected, okay, that the Lord is going to elect him, that said that Donald Trump is has a manifest destiny, you know, for what he is doing, you know, which is strong statements and brings a whole lot of baggage when you start using that kind of word, those kind of words, okay? Um, what is going on in the midst of this? And, um, and so that's what I want to deal with in terms of, of why in this. And, and I understand why people say, well, that, uh, it, it, you know, that the, the presidency is Donald Trump's destiny. And you know what? I would agree with those folks in, uh, to a certain degree in this. And listen to this, that I believe that God allowed Donald Trump to be president. Uh, and of course, it, it doesn't take a lot of, uh, uh, you know, anointing or anything else to say that because Donald Trump is president, okay? Uh, particularly in, in light of the fact that everybody thought Hillary Clinton was going to be president. And lo and behold, I think even Donald Trump was surprised that he won the presidency. And so that he is president, okay? And people say, oh, the Lord made Donald Trump president. And that's absolutely true. But I also want to tell you this the Lord also made Barack Obama president. And by the way, before that, the Lord made um, uh, Bill Clinton president. The Lord made uh, Bush, the first Bush and the second Bush president. Hey, the Lord made Washington president. He made Lincoln president. W what are you saying, Bishop? I'm saying that, listen, whoever is president, the Lord made that person president. And so to say that it's the manifest destiny of Donald Trump to be president, you know, like nobody else has that manifest destiny, is frankly wrong and deceptive because, uh, particularly as a conservative Christian, I believe in a sovereign God who uh, nothing happens that he either doesn't do it or allow it. And so God made Trump president like he did Obama before Trump, just like he's going to make the next president president. Uh, and honestly, I think that's going to be Joe Biden. Okay. And so when Joe Biden's president, um, then you can't say, well, the Lord made Trump president and he didn't make Joe Biden president, okay? Um, now, I will say this to you. If, if Donald Trump wins, then you know what? 
I'm prepared to eat some crow, okay? I'm prepared to say I was wrong, okay? But in the same way, for other people out there who have felt like it was Donald Trump's manifest destiny to win this election again and have come forth and put all of these uh, you know, have come forth as prophets to say this, if he doesn't get elected, then once again, they're going to have to eat some crow and say, you know what? I was wrong. I missed it. Okay. Now, let me bring this to the scripture. And, and, and while I say this in terms of the scripture, that one of the things I'm reading in the scripture, and of course, for, for, for people in New Horizon, uh, we were reading through First Kings, and that's kind of why I went here. And so they, 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 they've read this and uh, because we do these these devotional readings every day, um, and they came across this, what the scripture literally says is this: that God not only elevates and makes the kings who are the king of Israel, okay, or Judah, but God makes the kings who are the kings of even the other nations surrounding them. So that God tells Elijah, by the way. Syria, that is not, you know, at this setting, a godly nation. They're not the people of God. They're worshiping a different God at this particular point in time. God tells uh, Elijah to go anoint him, you know, uh, a king, Hazel, to anoint him king of Syria. And in the same way, you will see that throughout scripture that, God determines who's going to be the kings, not only in the godly nations, but guess what? In every nation. Because we believe in a sovereign God who's not just the God of America. He's the God of the whole world. Remember, Psalm 24, verse number one. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwells therein. He has has founded it upon the foot. Listen, God is in control, okay? We believe in a sovereign God that not even a sparrow falls, not a hair on your head. And once again, that's not just for Christians, okay? Uh, nothing happens that he either doesn't do it or allow it, okay? Uh, and, uh, and as a part of it. Now, I want to take this back a little farther, okay, as we move forward in this. Uh, and why and why I am where I am in terms of of Donald Trump and this election uh, that we're in the midst of. Okay, uh, I believe I had a word, and people in New Horizon can vouch for this. And I told people before the election last time in in sixteen, uh, I told folks that uh, the Lord said Hillary Clinton would not. Mm, I'm uh, having trouble hearing you. Move that, guys, okay? Just move it out the way altogether, okay? Move it, okay? Um, one of the things that God told me uh, was that Hillary Clinton would not be uh, president of, uh, of the United States. And so, uh, and so I, you know, I let the people of God here know that, okay? Uh, and honestly, at that particular point, I kind of knew if Hillary Clinton is not going to be president, then who's going to be president? I didn't leave with one other person who's going to be president, and that was uh, was Donald Trump. Now, I have to say to you that th that wasn't a person, okay, that I was certainly wasn't looking for in terms of that, and even though I had serious issues, I'll just be honest with you, about Hillary Clinton and about some things and positions that she took and other things like that, uh, I also understood that, frankly, Donald Trump was immoral, okay? Uh, but God took somebody who, in some sense, was a scoundrel. Okay, that's what we would have called him. With, with you look at Donald Trump's history. I mean, so much has been made of that. Uh, God decided Hillary Clinton wouldn't be president and made Donald Trump president. And I had to deal with God about that. I said, Lord, why in the world, okay, would you make somebody? who with all of her problems is in some sense less immoral certainly publicly uh, than this guy who's publicly, I mean, wow, all the things that he's done. Why in the world would you make him president and instead of her? 
And here's what the Lord said to me. Okay, I, I believe this is the word he told me. He says that, listen, he says, America is under judgment. I want you to hear this. He said to me, America wasn't coming under judgment. America was already under judgment. And he said to me that America has been under judgment for a while, okay? And that Trump was, Donald Trump was a big public sign of judgment. And that God would use somebody like Donald Trump, okay, to deal with us, okay, because we are under judgment. And he said to me that he's going to use Donald Trump to teach us some real hard lessons that we need to learn. Now, interesting enough. He also told me that there would be some things that Donald Trump would do would be good, that everything that Donald Trump would do would not be bad, okay? And he told me, hey, Donald Trump is not the Antichrist, and I want folks to hear this. He is not the Antichrist, but what I've come to understand is that Donald Trump had a lot of Antichrist-type ways, okay? And that Donald Trump, uh, from what I see in Scripture, is as close to the Antichrist as we will ever come without being the Antichrist. And once again, listen to me good, Donald Trump is not the Antichrist, okay? Uh, but he does have some Antichrist type ways. And uh, one of the things the Lord told me in the midst of this is that he was going to use once again Donald Trump as a judgment and that part of that judgment was upon the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that uh, because we won't deal with our issues, okay, uh, that God is going to, to judge us and, and, and punish us. And that uh, particularly the evangelical church, okay, that, uh, that God was uh, uh, going to cause them to believe a lie. Wow that there was an element of deception that was going to come upon the evangelical church because they were going to be, they were going to believe a lie. And, uh, and that Trump is a part of that lie. And, um, and that the evangelical church, once again, was going to lose out tremendously. And I think we have. I mean, the fact in a sense that we would elevate a guy like that to this place and say all of these wonderful things about him and make him, you know, seem so holy and all these other things. And, and come on, I mean, wow. We've never had a person, particularly in a position like president, that is as vile as, uh, as Donald Trump has, has been and would say the kind of things that Donald Trump has done as racist as Donald Trump, once again, I mean, come on, uh, you know, things that he's done and and just advocate stuff, even to the place that we're in a place right now that's almost unthinkable, okay? That we're in a place where there are people across this nation that's thinking race war and all of these kind of things like that. Uh, we, we've got, like, uh, the lady up in Michigan, uh, uh, you know, people thinking about hijacking, uh, uh, you know, kidnapping a, a sitting governor and people in that state, some of them think it's okay to make a citizen's arrest of a city government. I mean, this is crazy stuff, okay? And all of this stuff swirls around Donald Trump because Donald Trump is a sign of our judgment and how far we have fallen, okay? Of how far we have fallen and that we don't see the way that we need to see. And once again, I'm not saying sitting here that Donald Trump has not and would not do uh, some good things. I think he has, okay? I mean, some of the things that he has done in criminal justice reform, hey, I give him credit for it. Some of the things he's done in some job-related things, I give him credit for it. But here's the whole point. All of the stuff he's done to prop himself up and to make himself, because it's all about him. That's the deception in the midst of this. It's narcissism and other things. It's a part of this national sickness that we're in because we've got 
Trumpism, okay? That's, that's a sickness, okay? And all of us are being affected about this stuff, okay? And so uh, I'm not sitting here saying he, he didn't do some good things, you know, and those kind of things like that. Uh, but, uh, I mean, at the other side of this, even beyond the moral things of abortion and all these things, and I'm going to say something about that, he has done tremendous damage to this country. I mean, in terms of the military, in terms of foreign policy. I mean, it goes on and on, national reputation, just all kind of things. And we're going to be picking up the pieces uh, of this stuff. And some of this stuff, we're not going to even clearly see it until he's out of office. And so there are people that's probably going to be, they're, they're really mad with me about this, but you're going to see. And once again, I've said that, that you know, November the 4th and 5th is going to prove who's really hearing God in this and who's not. And if, if, if Trump continues in the presidency, then I'll, 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 once again, I'll eat crow. I'll, I'll take my medicine and say, boy, was I wrong in terms of that. But honestly, I don't think that's the case. I think I've got a word about this and I'm on the right side of this and that uh, we're dealing with the judgment and Trump is, is, a, is a sign of that judgment. And I want you to hear something else. I didn't say Trump was the first person that was a sign of that judgment. I could go back, okay, to others and say that the judgment has been upon us for a while. Uh, but Donald Trump is definitely that. And, you know, as, as once again, evangelicals, as people who love the Lord Jesus Christ, when we accept uh, somebody that has had the character flaws that Donald Trump is, then, you know, at certain things we can't call for anymore. I mean, we, you know, uh, uh, integrity, you know, uh, high morals and all that. We can't demand those things anymore when you're a president. But once again, it's somebody who, uh, uh, you know, we tolerate somebody who, who, who puts on the kind of things that Donald Trump puts on. And so the, the Church of Jesus Christ, who's backed him in this, can say very, very little. Um, and, uh, and, and I want to say this, and I'm, I'm trying to bring this to a close, okay? as a part of this, but, but I think I'm being a little prophetic in this, is um, because I, I talked about the fact that evangelical white churches on one side of it, black Christians, who are also a lot of them evangelical too, on a whole different side of this whole thing, and how is it that we're reading the same Bible and we, we come to such tremendously different conclusions in terms of this? Well, you know, a lot of this has to come down, frankly, to race, okay? It comes down to the issue of race, and and if you are um, uh, African American and have dealt with the vestiges of racism over the years and all these kind of things, you see things from a certain perspective in terms of things. And if you're white, you see it from a different perspective in terms of things. And what you think, once again, is the litmus test. Let me use that word too. Uh, in terms of things, comes down to be different. Uh, for white evangelicals, a lot of times the litmus test is abortion. And for a lot of my good friends, in a sense, that, that abortion is that litmus test and they feel like almost any means justifies the end to end and stop abortion. And I understand that uh, because I have kind of been on that side. Hey, I am I'm very much pro-life. And that hadn't just started, okay? I've been pro-life for, uh, hey, uh, 30 years or more, okay, uh, when I started really dealing with this whole issue, okay, uh, frankly, even longer than that, okay, because uh, New Horizons is 33 years old, so I was pro-life way below, and that's closer to 40 years or more, okay, uh, so I'm not uh, somebody that's new uh, to this whole issue, but I'm pro-life not only in the womb, I'm pro-life once you're born, too, okay, I'm pro-life all the way to the place in a sense of of also at this point anti-death sentence as well. And I always tell a lot of my friends, and particularly white friends who are pro-life, I say what you are is pro-birth, okay? But I believe in life all the way across uh, uh, the total existence of folk. And so, uh, and so I, I understand one judges, okay? Certain judges and others in terms of places and things like that of stuff, but I think that we're at one of these unique junctures and place in life 
that I'm just be very frank with you. I don't think abortion can be the final authority when it comes to this particular election. Because, you know, you, you got people out there saying, well, hey, we, we got to have somebody like Trump because he's going to stop abortion. You know, for those people in the sense that that's their main thing, I understand why they're there. It's going to stop abortion. We got to have these judges and all these kind of things. Okay, if that's the case, then if that's your, your opinion of it, then you don't need to vote for Trump anymore. Because now you've got your judges in place, if that's the point. You can put this guy down, okay, because you've got the Supreme Court packed the way you want to, and you're going to get rid of, of Roe, which, by the way, I don't think is about to happen. Because that's something, that's a carrot that's been dangled out there for years and years, uh, that, that hadn't happened yet, okay? But uh, beyond that, I, I don't think that that is the litmus test in terms of things at this point. I really think that the biggest issue in this country, frankly, at this point, I had to come to this, is the issue of race. Uh, that America's first and, and primary sin is racism. Uh, and that when you look at all of this stuff that's going on, that at this point, it trumps everything else. Once again, that's not to say that abortion and things like that aren't critically important. They are tremendously important. But once again, abortion only deals with birth itself. Yes, I believe folks ought to be born, but you gotta, you, you gotta take that all the way out in terms of it. Um, and yes, I, I disagree with some of these tactics in a sense on, if you will, the left around some of these things, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I struggle with some of these things, but I don't think everything in this is black and white. I think that we've come to that place of judgment in the midst of this, that you've got to look at this a little bit differently. And, uh, and I think that we're at this place because we've been unwilling to deal with America's sin and to some degree the sin of the world. And that's why even with the pandemic that's going on, uh, America is having such a significantly hard time when we shouldn't be having this hard time. Come on, we're supposed to be the world leader. We're supposed to have it all together and things like that. But the reality is God is bringing our national arrogance and everything else down back on our head. And he's showing us, hey, you're not who you think you are. And, uh, and he's humbling us. And so, um, and so that's where I think we are, uh, and why I think we are where you we are, that we're at this place of judgment. And God is speaking to our hearts, and the question is, will we repent? As a church, will we repent, and uh, and get to where we need to get to? Uh, boy, with all the things that has happened in this country around Black Lives Matter, and even the fact that, that, that so many Christians detest even the thought of that. And listen, I mean, there's a group of folks that started Black Lives Matter who, and no doubt about it, it's, it's about gay rights and all this other kind of stuff like that. And come on, I don't support all that stuff and things like that. But the thought of Black Lives Matter is a true and good thought. Because the fact is, in the United States, black lives have not mattered traditionally. You know, from lynching to everything else uh, that is happening in that. And the fact that in the church, people would have such a, a visceral response to that, it tells you that we got all this baggage, race-related stuff, okay? Um, and because uh, we got all this history of stuff that, if the truth be told, if we weren't forced, if the civil rights movement hadn't forced the church, uh, the white evangelical church into a place where it is, a lot of stuff wouldn't ever change. If we were waiting just for the church to really come to it and not been forced to come to it, okay? Hey, black folks were still be in tremendous bondage. We still got bondage stuff that needs to be dealt with. No doubt about it, okay? And by the way, that doesn't, because this is another thing. We'll say, oh, well, well, you know, hey, you're killing folks. All these folks dying in Chicago and now in Jackson. I, you are absolutely right, okay? We got some real problems that need to be dealt with, and we got to stand up and deal with that kind of stuff because 
our lives aren't in value. But that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be valuable to you. The truth is black lives do matter. Yes, just like white lives matter. And red lives are matter, okay? Uh, yellow lives are matter. All lives are matter. But when some life has not mattered, then you highlight it. And that's all the black lives matters. That movement, not that organization, okay? That's being said. But the fact that we got all this stuff still in us, and I think that all of us has to examine where we are in our hearts about this stuff before I think we can come to a real conclusion that, you know what? Yeah, I too need to repent. Does Ryder Croup need to repent? Yep, I need to repent. I don't have no problem saying that. I got stuff in me that needs to be dealt with. But I think the church of Jesus Christ out there needs to repent and, uh, and that judgment is upon us. Now, if we don't learn the lessons that I frankly think Donald Trump is showing us, then you know what? We really are going to fall for an antichrist. Now, eventually it's going to happen, and maybe that's the whole point, is eventually we're not going to learn the lessons, and it's going to have to happen. Now, I'll say this to you. You said Donald Trump is, is antichrist-like. Yeah, he's a strong man, because we've proven we like somebody who has this, this, this persona that he's strong, great business guy, can do all this. Now, we now know all that's a lie. He's not a billionaire, you know, all of these other things. He, he's, you know, he's failed all along the way. The real Antichrist will, will, will be all of that stuff. And then he won't be like Trump. He'll be smooth, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, he won't turn folk off public the way Trump will. And he'll turn them off, but he'll turn them off in the back, okay? Behind the scenes in terms of all this. But it's shown us how susceptible we are and how we can be taken and how we can get to a place where morality and other things don't matter. All that matters is what you want. So in other words, by all means necessary. As long as we get what we want, then by all means necessary. From, from uh, uh, Franklin Graham all the way down to everybody else. Now, here's the end of all this. November the 3rd is coming. And according to who wins on that night, some of us are going to have to eat more crow and repent even more. If Trump wins, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to be sick. Because <laughs> I just hate to see where this is going to take us. Because for me, if Trump wins, it means we ain't suffered enough. God said we ain't suffered enough. And he's, he, he's going to make this nation suffer even more. Okay? And I'm praying that that is not the case. All right? And I'll repent publicly and say, hey, you're God's man even though I don't like it. But if he loses, then I had a good word from the Lord. And then I'm expecting other folk on the other side to repent. And so you know what? Wow. Group, you were right. And we need to learn the lessons we need to learn. That's why. Let me close in prayer. Father, in the strong and wonderful name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. That's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. I thank you that you are a sovereign God that, uh, that controls everything and that you do love America. And therefore, you brought America under judgment so that you could bring us to repentance. God, we trust you. Help us, God, to deal with people that we differ with. Because some of us are really mad with people on the other side. Some of us, Lord, uh, uh, we're not going to be very forgiving of folk who may have been on the other side. So help us in the midst of all of this. Uh, Lord, because none of us are totally right about things. And so help us, even if we are right, to not be arrogant, but to be humble and seek to follow you better. God, open our eyes so we can see even more. And Lord, don't, uh, my prayer is that you don't have to 
inflict us so much more severely for us to see what we need to see. Oh God, bless your people as they go forward and vote. And uh, Lord, I pray you would restrain foolish, stupid people who would want to turn this nation uh, into a war zone and shed a lot of blood. So Lord, don't give those people the desires of their heart. Uh, in Jesus' name, bind that thing, God, uh, so that uh, we won't have murder in our streets even more. Help us to see that uh, being an American should mean a whole lot more because we are the people that God has had his hands on. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Hey, saints, I pray that uh, this has been good for you and will cause you to think a whole lot. Argue with me if you want to, okay? I uh, hope you won't talk too bad about me, but it don't really bother me if you do. Because guess what? November the 3rd is coming. And we're going to know that night. I think we're going to know that night, okay? Because here's the other thing the Lord told me, okay? As I close this, here's another word. The Lord told me, just like he made Donald Trump president in 16, that he was going to unseat him and that Trump was uh, going to lose by landslide. And by the way, you can talk to folks in New Orleans and know I hadn't just started saying that. I've been saying that from the very beginning. So you say, oh, well, you look at all these people. You, no, no, no. I've been saying that from the very beginning, that uh, that Trump would be able to claim he brought out more folks to vote ever in the history of the United States, but ain't one problem. He brought them out to vote against him. And so I believe we're going to know the third. So, hey, so after the election, you can judge me. Until the next time, saints, count it all joy. Check out these announcements, okay?